put together a couple of, um, of lab demonstrations to try to uh, help you get a better feel for some of the, the concepts that I talked about on the whiteboard. Uh, we talked about the requirements if you were going to replace uh, an air ride system with some sort of ideal uh, element that would need to have speed, precision, power, and fit. At this, uh, in these stations, we're going to just cover the first two, and then we're going to move and talk about the other two. Uh, the first one is speed. You remember, no two bumps are alike. Trucks move really fast over these things. Uh, to explain to you, you know, when I say speed, your question might be, well, how fast is, is required? Uh, I'd like to introduce to you, by the way, uh, this is Brian Selden. Brian's a controls engineer who's written a lot of the algorithms for the product, and he's also written some special ones for this demonstration. And, and this is Tony Sangiovanno. Uh, Tony's an electrical engineer on the project. He's uh, built some of the gear that you're going to see in action today. Uh, what Brian's going to show us is this thing in action. This is a Bose electromagnetic linear actuator. And even though it's really small, it's actually fast, precise, and powerful enough to do the job that I told you about. And I'm going to show you how it works. The, this part of it is attached to the truck floor, and this is the armature. It's the moving part that attaches to the driver's seat. I'm going to go to the first, uh, first example, which is the handle of the bottle. Remember when the truck floor drops down, and we're trying to hold the driver relatively motionless, that the thing in between would have to extend suddenly in order to hold the driver up. And then when it reaches the back side of the pothole, the truck floor comes up, this thing in the middle needs to actually gently lower the driver down. It has to retract very quickly so the driver remains motionless. So we expect this thing to be able to almost instantly move, or extend, and then compress. So that's what Brian's going to demonstrate first. Down into the pothole, back up. Back quickly. Well, that's a simple example of pothole. Real roads are very complex. And in fact, we have a whole range of frequencies that we need. Remember we talked about whole body vibration reaching uh, drivers, that there was a whole spectrum. Well, this actuator needs to be able to move fast enough to cancel or counteract all of those floor vibrations, no matter how fast they come at you know, are coming. So to give you a feel for that, I'm just going to step us through what those frequencies are. A few of the, you know, just a few uh, spots along the way. You can do two, please. 1,001, 1,002, that's two cycles per second, two hertz. Double it again. This was the belly frequency. Remember four hertz? Now, if you just think about sitting on that thing for a while, you should be, you should start to make you feel kind of awful, because this is really awful. Uh, but you can see from my chart, we're not even, we're not very far up into this, this whole spectrum that affects drivers. And uh, when we, when we started looking into the, uh, the hardware aspects of this project, we looked into a lot of different technologies. We looked into pneumatics and hydraulics and and all sorts of things. And we found that they were too slow. In fact, the hydraulic system, this is about as fast as it can go in terms of canceling vibration. But that's not fast enough. So we're going to double it again. That's pretty fast. About a third of the way there. Can you double it again? This is 16 cycles per second, 16 hertz. Now that looks very fast. But it's still not fast enough because Remember our eyes jiggle at 20 hertz. So this is still too slow to cancel the vibration that uh, jiggles our eyes. Can you double it again? That's 32 hertz. And that's what I mean by fast in terms of what's required, because that gets us all the way across this whole spectrum in order to cancel out all of those vibrations. That's an example of speed 
precision really has to do with the fact that we, it's not just a single frequency that comes out of the truck floor. It's all this unexpected motion because no two bumps are the same. And so we need to counteract those really precisely. When I thought about how to explain this, it occurred to me that one of the things that our suspension does is it handles the bottoming of the seat in a very different way than an air ride seat. Most of you are familiar with this problem in that there's only plus and minus two inches of travel, so if a bump is bigger than two inches, the driver's gonna, gonna hit the bottom, or if it starts to resonate. Well, in our system, uh, we also have to manage that too. We get into a big enough bump that we have to touch down. But what we'd like to do is not have the driver crash into the stuff, but instead, just give them a really soft landing. And thinking about that soft landing, I'm gonna get away from trucking for a minute here, but we'll bring it back. That's not a soft landing, right? Ball bounce back. It's a very <coughs> abrupt landing. I gave Brian the task of writing a special program to catch the ball without bouncing on a hard surface. Put a put a hard plate on top of the actuator. Brian's task was to keep it from, was to give it a softer landing than that. He worked on that for a while. And I came down to the lab to check on his progress at one point, and he approached me with this. It's a base plate that's part of the system. And he said, Jim, I'd like you to hold this four inches above the belt. Four inches because that's the amount of that's the amount of travel he has in his actuator. He says, now, look, if we think about the human body, it's actually a pretty good control system. You know, if you imagine an athlete, you know, like a football player, catching a touchdown pass. It's amazing how well we're able to control. Well, Brian had me hold this thing, and he said, Jim, let me see if you can catch this ball without bouncing. And uh, I'm going to show you what that, what that was like. better. Okay. <coughs> so Brian went back to work and it, it cost me some pizza, but I'd, I'd like to show you what he was able to accomplish here. Do that again. Do that again. <laughs> do that again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do the slow-mo and then we'll, we'll, we'll do it one more time, okay? Uh, because you're probably curious in that amount of time what happened. Uh, what, what happened here is the, we had a couple of light sensors that that saw the ball coming. The sensor sent a signal back to our microprocessor, and then Brian's program went to work doing some, some mathematics to calculate where the ball is, how fast it's moving, when it's going to arrive, and what would be the right motion for the actuator in order to bring that ball to a stop. And then, unlike a, a driver, the ball was compressed until it wants to bounce up. The armature had to get out of the way really quickly so the ball wouldn't bounce up and then come back and hold the ball in place. So we're gonna show you that on a, all those steps here so you can see how, how it actually happened. Notice that the ball never goes up once it's brought to rest. We're gonna come back and just have hold it in place. That's not exactly how our algorithms work for handling bottoming, but that's the same type of precision and same timing. Should we do it again? Mm -hmm. You're the boss, Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only if they want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do it again. Yeah, okay, one more time. <laughs>